Hey, welcome to the last day of summer. Big front coming through, gonna be 48 degrees tonight. Monday morning's gonna be ugly. Glad to have you here on this episode of Mark Menendez Bass TV. I've got a new bait. It's a new rendition of a bait. It's the Strike King Thunder Cricket, but this is the tungsten model. You can see that little bitty head there allows that blade on that jig to move even more. Harder throbbing, harder pulling, and harder hooking with this old big hook on this bait. It's summer. Water temperature is still 85 degrees in this lake. It's a putrid green color. This is the perfect time to take a bladed jig and just go. Just go down the bank. The fish are scattered. There's some behind us out in the deep. There's some in front of us. There's some on cover. Just go. And this is what a lot of our tournament strategies have come to is take it and run. So we're going to run with it and see what happens. Welcome back for another season of Mark Menendez Bass TV. This week, Mark is bringing the thunder. Thunder cricket, that is. There aren't many techniques as popular as throwing a bladed jig. And Mark is here to bring you a day filled with his best tips and tricks to catching bass on this super popular bait. Let's get on the water as Mark starts to comb Lake X for some cricket eaters. And then uh, everything, there he is. That was quick. Good fish too. That's a good one to get started with, I'm telling you. Coming right at me. Look at him, he's cutting it up now, I'm telling you. Big fish, old hook reached out there and got him. That's the thing about this bait. It's got a great, big, gigantic hook in it. Come here, dude, come here, quit now. Uh, come here to me. Now I got him. There you go. How about that? The tungsten thunder cricket got him right in top of the head. See that big, giant hook? That's what's so important on this bait but there's a new twist to this bait. We'll talk about that in a minute. That old good fish just came up right up behind it and pushed right behind it. That's what we're gonna talk about with the Thunder Cricket. Nice bass. Bait throws so far if you want it to. It's good, you, gotta, you can be accurate with it, but this is the thing about it. You can just cover water. Just go and go and go. Those particularly those slow tournaments where five fish are real important, you know, hard to, hard to get them to bite. This is a way a lot of the lead anglers get their limit. A lot of pro anglers just take this thing and go. It will find one when you least expect it and it'll find them where you expect to find them. And those in between, those least expected ones are the ones that add up at the end of the day. It's great on days like this where it's blustery and overcast, big front pushing through. It's also really good on those days when it's high and bluebird and it takes a little extra something to make these fish fire on a bait. Um, fish it so many ways. It's an easy bait to fish. You can wind it like I'm doing just right here. It's just a, it's a great way to do that. One of the most intriguing ways that I fish the thing is almost like a jig. Throw it out there, let it get, up, get towards the bottom and just kind of swim it back. That slow hopping swimming motion, man, that'll find a big one sometimes. Mark has started the day off fast. He set his motor guide on cruise control down the bank. He's using a new tungsten version of the Strike King Thunder Cricket. So far, he's boated one nice bass. He's varying his retrieve almost every other cast to dial in exactly what the bass want. It's still super warm water temperatures, and the bass will need to see a variety of retrieves to be coaxed into biting. But Mark is super confident he'll find a limit. I let that bait fall and it was just like a jig bite. Dink! Little guy. Almost a keeper. But he hit it on the fall. That's one of those ones that I wasn't counting on that bite, but he bit it anyway and could have very well been a four pounder as well as a 12 incher there, you know? Another one I got behind. That little fella hit it on the fall. See, I got him actually hooked under the chin. Little fella's actually, he came up and looked at it. I don't feel stay still. He's hooked under the chin. Look at that, came right out from there. That was just that lift and pull. But liking this dark one. I'm gonna pick up a white one here in a minute and do a few more things with it. Just a lift and pull right now. Just a lift and pull. 
just fish it a little faster than what you would a jig because with a jig you've got a weed guard it's a little more weedless just by the shape of it but when you're down going down a riprap or an open bank or gravel bar or whatever this is a good oh goodness gracious that was a bite right there good way to fish it so many times with this bait they just come up and get it they don't hit it real hard the blade just quits wiggling that's what's so cool about this tungsten bait it thumps harder the head of it's a heck of a lot smarter given that smaller given that blade a lot more room and it the hookup percentage on it's even that much better than what the uh, regular cricket was. The little bitty guy got after it. It's an easy bait to see on active target, so you can pick out fish and throw to them. Um, it's an easy way to bait to manipulate all that metal. That blade throws a great return back to the unit back to the active target unit where you can see it so well. There ought to be one right here on this little corner. There's a good drop on this side of it with that wind coming across it. Yeah, actually, right there. There he was, right where he should be active fish right there. He was ready to get him a bite to eat. He got him a little cricket instead. Hard pulling little job, I'll tell you that. Come here. Get over here. He's got it swallowed. Look how well he ate that. Came up right behind it and just sucked it right in, right in the back of the throat. That's the way you like it. Probably another fish right there. That's the cool thing about this. Vibration, vibration, vibration. Let's get another cast right to that same place. Should be another one right there. God, that felt right. That sure felt right. He was sitting right where he needed to be, right up there on that little flat, facing the wind. off the side of that drop. We're out here in about eight or nine, so that thing falls real quick. Fish it like a jig back to the boat. You know, the bait is great for catching big ones, great for catching numbers, but it is a fantastic choice for someone who is an inexperienced fisherman. Young person, your wife, your girlfriend, your daughter, your son. Um, they don't have to do a lot with this bait to, ca to be successful with it. Casting and winding is a great way to go, pumping it, whatever you want to do, but it just simply catches fish, and that's the great thing about it. Old, young, small, and tall can all catch them with this thing. The thunder isn't super loud right now. Mark has managed to catch several bass, but the only ones attracted to his cricket are peanuts, other than one good one. However, the wind is starting to pick up, as the first cold front of the fall has approached and the clouds are moving in. This could signal a feeding frenzy for some bigger bass. But first, Mark is going to prep a new trailer and give you some insight on some of his favorites. You know, the trailer on your Thunder Cricket can vary. I use so many different things. I've got three crickets here, three different trailers. Minnow scrub, blade minnow, and a uh, cutter worm on these three right here. But one of my absolute favorites is a game hog especially when I'm around big populations of bluegill. This is one of my springtime deals. When I really get in colder water and need to slow it down some, I'll even put a, a rage bug on there. But all of these trailers all have a purpose, either in slowing the bait down, making the profile look longer, making it look bigger, whatever it is. I use multiple different trailers for multiple different presentations. And you can see shad, bluegill, and whatever else that black one looks like to them, makes them always bite it. But your trailer choices are absolutely unlimited. All right, I've made a little color change. Different color blade on this one. This is a white with a white and chartreuse skirt on it. And I've seen some shad out here flicking. 
and I'm gonna move the bait a little faster. So when I want the bait moving with speed, I change rods. As we become better fishermen with a crankbait, with a, with, a, with a vibrating bait, with whatever, we get really in tune to what that bait is doing. We really feel that vibration. And if that vibration does a little something funny, we set the hook. So I've changed to a composite rod. This is a rod that I throw square bills on. I throw all kinds of crankbaits on. And what this does is this slows the whole process down. I, f I can feel the bait vibrating, but I can't feel it when a fish hits it. That fish can get the whole bait, the rod will load up, then I'll know the fish is on there and then I'll bring him to the boat. So I like to use this composite rod, especially when I'm moving the bait really fast because you get a lot of fish that just come up and just come up behind it and eat the bait and you don't feel them. So uh, this gives me a better chance to go ahead and let them eat the bait, turn and get a hook in them. One minute, I can't tell if he's a good one or not. No, just a little guy. That's the only thing with the composite rod. You don't know whether he's a giant or just barely a keeper until you get him right up here close. And that's okay. That's okay. You saw how deep that one, that one took it. That's two bites right there. You know, with the bladed jig, you've got silver blades. We now have a gold blade with a thunder cricket. And then you've got painted blades. Don't see a lot of white painted blades like on this one. Um, but that's one of my favorites in, in dingier water. It gives it a little better silhouette. But you see the green pumpkins and the blacks uh, on painted blades as well on the cricket. But I really like this white bladed cricket when water conditions are like this where we have Limited visibility and lots of wind, and they can just see it a hint better, I feel like. Just a little more visibility for them. Thunder cricket or a spinnerbait? That's a good debate. Water temperatures are above 75 degrees. I feel like a thunder cricket's gonna outperform a spinnerbait 10 to one, just because this blade is moving so fast, brrrr, where a spinnerbait, even if it's a Colorado blade, will be thum, 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 thum. This actually makes these fish matter. So I think the thunder cricket is the one in hotter water. Cooler water, that old spinnerbait, you can slow it down a little bit and it may have a little bit more of an advantage. The only other time a spinnerbait would have an advantage when you're burning that spinnerbait in ultra clear water. You can move this fast, smallmouth hate, I mean hate a thunder cricket. They will take it out of your hands. So that's another way to fish it in, in gin clear water, moving it fast. It's a good way to keep it moving and catch those big smallmouth over the bars, the gravel and stuff like that on Kentucky Lake. It'll work really well. That one hit his second it hit the water. I've yet to figure out how big this fish is. Wow, did you see that? Look at that. He's not even that big. Goodness gracious, that is, that's the hardest fighting fish I've hung in a while. Did you see that fish? He hit it the second it hit the water and he's not even that big and he's caught. Look at that, that is a track star. I pitched it right on the corner of those reeds. I didn't even get the reel in gear and he came streaking out of there. My, 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 wow. You got a big attitude, dude. Goodness gracious. I mean, it hit the water and the fish had it. I never caught up to him. That's the crazy thing about this bait. How many times that happens, how fast they come out of the cover with it. For 75 years, Skeeter has been engineering boats like no other, proven with 21 consecutive NMMA Consumer Satisfaction Awards, and that tradition is memorialized with the 75th anniversary FXR21 Apex, the ultimate boat with virtually every premium feature, exclusive colors, badging, flooring, celebrating 75 years of engineering boats like no other. Experience one for yourself at your local dealer. Learn more.
at SkeeterBoats.com. Pro-inspired, pro-designed, tested and proven by legends on the water, dominating the tournament trail for over 50 years. Everything you need, one legendary brand. Strike King. Hi, I'm Mark Zona. <laughs> what? I'm Mark Zona. Well, I need a performance braid for finesse presentations. And I need a performance braid for power fishing. Seaguar Smackdown High Viz Flash Green lets me see line movement for those subtle bites. Smackdown Low Viz Stealth Gray blends in to make my presentations more natural. Both are eight strands in a perfectly round weave. And for me, it's the longest casting and quietest braid on the planet. Smackdown Braid from Seagull, always the best. The tour is back. Yeah. When you go out skipping, trying to learn, it's not about catching fish. Will it help you catch fish? Yes. Will it help you catch more and bigger fish? Yes. But there's something about when you go out and try to learn and you get the right equipment and, and you skip, slam out of sight, and you can't see it, you feel like you won. Whether you caught one or not, skipping downright makes you feel good when you skip a bait, slam out of sight. No technique nor angler is perfect. If so, we wouldn't have a variety of winners or lures. Even though Mark has had several bites, he's also had several misses and a few acrobatic bass that just came off. But that's all part of the game. Mark continues paralleling the shore, burning his thunder cricket just off the bank where the majority of his bites seem to be in only inches of water. That's a good one right there. Oh, big hook. Hold on there to him, big hook. Hold on there, big hook. Big old humpback fish. Get it. Got it right in the corner of the mouth. Golly, he is hot too. They hit this thing so hard, I think they fight harder that way because they, they're so mad at it. There we go. Old summertime skinny mini, but he's a big old headed fish. Look at that. Big hump to him. Big hump to him there. I mean, that's another one. The second it hit the water, I put it in gear and he had it. Blade didn't even quiver on that. Whew. Old pond smelling fish. All right, I mean, the second it hit the water. I rolled it just like that and the fish was on it. it. Amazes me how they bite it on the initial fall. I mean, it's an ugly old duck. Oh, right at the boat. Oh, he's not big, but I'm glad I pushed that button. A little barely a keeper, maybe. Golly, I mean, he tried to take it. So you hold him like this and he becomes a keeper real quick. Just about took my rod from me. This front's getting closer and closer. They're gonna start biting here. I love days like today. Today's a good day to catch an old great, great big one. Barometric pressure's falling, wind's blowing low. Skies, skies are dark and gray. Big fish It'd be moving just like that one. Oh, that came off. Oh my goodness. That's the first one I felt hit me. I never even caught up with that fish. You know, I like a longer rod that is very parabolic in action when using this style of bait. This is a seven foot three pro TI rod. It's kind of my utilitarian rod. It's a rod I do a lot of different things with. It's got a good tip to it, got a good backbone to it. Uh, very accurate rod, very sensitive rod. 
Line sizes, it varies between 15 and 20 most of the time. I like Seaguar and Vizex. Uh, the lighter line, I'll fish a little deeper or in areas in which I don't have any, any real cover to worry about. And the heavier line is when I'll get around 20, you know, need 20 to get to fish around, out from around cover and moving closer to the boat quicker. Um, gear ratio, if I'm fishing shallow, I'll use this Pro TI, this is a 7.5 to 1. But if I'm having to really kind of time it and keep the bait down in the water column, ah, that little bitty dog, keep it down in the water column, I will use a uh, custom speed spool with a seven, seven to one gear ratio. Um, that reel only picks up 30 inches of line where this one picks up 33. And I can slowly crawl that bait and keep it down on the bottom a heck of a lot easier, that slower gear ratio. A lot of times when they, just like that one did, they bite this bait and they turn they get the bait right in the corner of the mouth, just like that, and they get leverage on you. When that bait's in the corner of their mouth and they're swimming real hard, a big one, they get leverage on you, and that's why they pull so hard with this bait. And with that, you're at risk of having them pull off because of that. But that's what this big hook is. On the Thunder Cricket, the main hook is longer. The shank of that hook is longer, so it extends back further than most bladed jigs do. And that gives you a better hookup ratio than other bladed jigs, in my opinion. There's a good one. That's a good one right there. Yes. He absolutely went the other way with it. Uh -huh. See, he's got it in the side of the mouth. Come here, fella. Come here, we'll get you to get that out of your mouth here in just a second. Oh, yes, sir. In the corner of the mouth. Well, I tell you, weather's changing. The thunder cricket was thundering. We're gonna get out of here, and we appreciate you being with us on Mark Menendez Bass TV. Can't wait for this weather to get a little cooler because the fishing's gonna get better. See you next time. Mark Menendez Bass TV is brought to you by Skeeter Boats. Seagull, Blues, Feel the Difference, Strike King Lure Company, Motor Guide, Never Stop, Closed Captioning Provided by Dysafe.